Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have our first example of how to find the Fourier series of a periodic function. Here it is. It's a periodic function that has a period equals to 2. So you see that the period is from here to there. The function is equal to 1 for the first half of the period and is equal to 0 for the second half of the period. How do we turn that into a Fourier series? Well, again, it comes down to finding the, the constants a sub naught, a sub n, and b sub n. Okay, so starting out with a sub naught, a sub naught is equal to 1 over the period times the integral from 0 to the period of the function times dt. Now, of course, we realize here that the function only equals 1 from 0 to 1, and we don't have to integrate all the way from 0 to 2 because the function is equal to 0 from 1 to 2. So this cannot be written as 1 over, remember that the period is equal to 2, so we write 1 over 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of the function, which is equal to 1 from 0 to 1, times dt, which is equal to 1 half times t from 0 to 1, which is equal to 1 half, which means that a sub naught equals 1 half. Now we try to find a sub n. So here we write that a sub n is equal to 2 over t, the integral from 0 to t of f of t times the cosine of n omega t. And of course we need a dt with that. Now we're going to evaluate all the a sub n's. And to do that, we're going to multiply again. We only need to multiply or integrate from 0 to 1 because from 1 to 2 the function is equal to 0. So we're just integrating 0. We don't need to do that. So this is equal to 2 divided by 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of the function, which is 1, times the cosine of n omega, well, omega can be written as 2 pi over t, 2 pi over t, times t, and times dt. All right, well, let's see here. To make it simpler, we can write t can be equal to 2, and then the 2's cancel out. So that's probably easier to write. So we can sort of simplify, realizing that when we divide by t, we're really dividing by 2, and then the 2's cancel out. So it's a cosine of n pi times t dt. Probably better to write that. Okay, next we want to integrate that. So when we integrate the cosine, we get the sine. But of course, we need an n times pi times dt. Since we're missing that, we need the proper differential. So this is equal to 1 over n times pi times the sine of n pi t evaluated from 0 to 1. Notice that the 2 over 2 becomes 1, and then the proper differential is obtained when we multiply times n times pi to get n pi dt, and of course we need to divide by n times pi as well. When we evaluate this, this is equal to 1 over n pi times the cos the sine of n times pi times t. Now t will be 1, that would be n times pi minus when plugging the lower limit, which is a sine of 0. Okay, well here we realize that n is an integer, and the sine of 1 times pi or 2 times pi or 3 times pi, well that will always be 0, and the sine of 0 is always 0, so this whole thing is equal to 0, so we realize here that all the values of all the a sub n's equal 0. So we can write that a sub n is equal to 0. All right, now let's find the b sub n's, and those will probably not equal 0. Let's try it. b sub n is equal to 2 over t times the integral from 0 to the period of f of t, in this case times the sine of n omega t dt. And again, we know that t is 2, so we can write this as 2 over 2 times the integral from 0 to 1. We only have to integrate to 1 because the function is 0 from 1 to 2. Of the function, 1 times the sine of n times, instead of omega, we can write 2 pi over t, so that's 2 pi over 2 times t dt, and again the 2's cancel out. And when we integrate, 
the derivative of the sine is the positive cosine, which means the integral of the sine is the negative cosine. So we're going to get the negative 1 over, and again we need the proper differential. We have an n pi t dt, which means we need an n pi times dt. So we multiply this times n times pi and divide by n times pi. That would be times the cosine of n pi t evaluated from 0 to 1. Now here we have a different story because remember when we plug in 1 and 0 we're going to get real values for the, so, the, the cosine of those angles. So this is equal to minus 1 over n times pi times the cosine of n times pi times 1 which is simply n times pi minus the cosine of 0 when we plug in the lower limit. Now it turns out when n is odd, 1 times pi, we get the cosine of pi, which is negative 1, minus the cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. But if n is even, notice we get the cosine of 2 pi, or 4 pi, or 6 pi, so the cosine of an even number times pi is going to be 1, and the cosine of 0 is also going to be 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0, which means when n is even, it's 0, and when it's odd, this becomes negative 2. So this quantity right here, this will be equal to 0 when n is even, and it's going to be equal to negative 2 when n is odd. So this is only valid for odd values of n. Well, when we then finalize this, we then realize that this is going to be equal to a minus 2 times a minus 1, which is 2 over n times pi. So in other words, we could say that b sub n is equal to 2 over n times pi only for n equals odd, because for n equals even, it is 0. So we can say here b sub n equals 0 for n equals even. All right, so now we found all the constants. We found a sub naught, which is a half. We realize that all the a sub n's is equal to 0, and all the b sub n's is 2 divided by n times pi, only for the odd n's. Plugging that back into the original equation, because this here is, after all, the representation of the periodic function in sines and cosines, and, of course, a DC term. So finally, we can say that f of t is equal to a sub naught, which we found to be one half, plus the infinite sum from n equals one to n equals infinity of the quantity a sub n, well that will be zero, right, because all the a sub n's are zero, plus, I'll put a bracket around here, b sub n, and b sub n would be two over n times pi times the sine of n omega t and notice that's only good for n equals odd. Okay, now what we can do, this is the general way of writing it, but what we can do now is we can write out every single term and see how this develops. So now we can say that this function, this is a basically a step function here, we have, well, a periodic function. We have f of t can now be written as one half Plus, when n is equal to 1, we have 2 over 1 times pi, so that's 2 over pi, times the sine of n omega t, which makes it the sine of omega t. Plus, when n is 3, because n cannot be 2, because then that will be 0, so when n is equal to 3, we get 2 over 3 pi times the sine of 3 omega t. Plus, when n is 5, we get 2 over 5 pi times the sine of 5 omega t plus, and at this point, you can see the, the series, how the series will end up. It will be 2 over 7 pi, 2 over 9 pi, 2 over 11 pi times the sine of 7 omega t, 9 omega t, and so forth. So this here is the Fourier series representation of our original step function.
And if you go enough terms, maybe five or six or seven terms, you'll end up with something that looks very closely to this original function, but it'll now be in terms of signs. And that's a lot easier to work with. So how do you deal with it here in general terms when n is equal to odd? Well, you could write it in various ways. One of the possible ways that you could write it is as follows. You can say this, you can say, well, uh, the f of t is equal to 1 half times the infinite sum from n equals 1 to infinity of, and then you can say 2 over, well, how about 2n minus 1? If you write it like this, then when n is equal to 1, 2 minus 1 is 1. When n is equal to 2, that's 4 minus 1 is 3. When n equals to 3, that would be 6 minus 1 is 5. You get all the proper numbers right here. So you could write as 2 over 2n minus 1 times pi. And that would be times the sine of n. And again, we want this to be a 1, a 3, a 5, and so forth as n increases by 1. So again, we can write as uh, we could write this as 2n minus 1 times omega t. And so we can also write it like this. Or you can simply write it like this and saying you're only going to take the odd n. So this is the technicality, but it needs to be made clear so you realize that the even ones do not apply. Only the odd ones can apply here. And that's one way to deal with it or simply say n's are only odd. Even ones will be cast away. And so this is how we find the Fourier series of our original problem. That's how it's done.